Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. It's 2.20. I'd like to call the meeting to order, and we'll begin with the roll call of commission members. Uh, Commissioner Fair. I am uh, present, and I can see and hear you. Ah, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Ponce. I am here. I can see and hear you. Thank you. And Commissioner Rubin. I am here, and I can see and hear you. Great. Thank you. And we have a quorum. Um, and we'll begin with a statement. In 2020, Governor Pritzker signed Public Act 101-0640, making certain amendments to the Open Meetings Act so that we, along with the other boards and commissions, can continue to host virtual meetings during the COVID-19 public health emergency, provided that certain conditions are met. One of those conditions is that Chairman Wong of the Commission on Chicago Landmarks determines that an in-person meeting of the Chicago Landmarks, Commission on Chicago Landmarks and the Permit Review Committee are not practical or prudent. Commissioner Wong has determined pursuant to Section 7E2 of the Open Meetings Act that an in-person meeting of the Commission on Chicago Landmarks and its Permit Review Committee is not practical or prudent. He has also determined pursuant to Section 7E5 that because of the disaster as declared by the governor, it is infeasible for at least one member of the Commission on Chicago Landmarks or its chief administrative officer or its chief legal officer to be physically present at the meeting place uh, for either meeting in as much as there is no physical meeting place. Pursuant to a resolution adopted by the Commission on Chicago Landmarks on uh, June 4th, 2020, regarding the chairman's rule, uh, emergency rule making powers, Chairman Wong issued emergency rules governing the conduct of remote public uh, commission meetings and provisions for remote public participation, effective February 18, 2022. These rules are posted on the commission's website. In line with these emergency rules, today's regular permit review committee Permit Review Committee meeting is a virtual meeting being simulcast to the general public via live streaming. Permit Review Committee meetings have been held virtually since May of 2020. Meetings are structured to minimize the chances for technical difficulties. Members of the general public have been encouraged to submit written statements in advance of the meeting, and these have been posted on the Commission's website and are available for public view during the virtual meeting at www.chicago.gov ccl. Per the emergency rules, <clears throat> verbal statements by the general public for all agenda items will take place at the beginning of the meeting. So as so all those wishing to speak at today's meeting should be signed into the Zoom meeting at this time. Um, before we hear the staff presentations on the agenda items and ask to hear from owners or applicants and their teams, we will, we will open the floor up to members of the general public who wish to comment about the items to be heard on today's agenda. Members of the general public um, wishing to comment should use the raise hand function of Zoom to indicate they wish to speak. Members of the public not using a smartphone or computer uh, and instead phoning in um, to the meeting should press star nine to activate the raise hand function and do the same to deactivate it. Um, I or the meeting facilitator will call out the names one by one and unmute those people. Once unmuted, speakers should give their full name and organization, if any, they represent. Each speaker is allocated three minutes to speak. Once all members of the general public wishing um, to make a comment have been given an opportunity to do so, we will go through the agenda. And I would ask that owners or applicants and the representatives as well as aldermen wait um, to speak until after staff presentations have been made on their agenda item. And I'd like to go through the agenda item um, to allow for public comment at this time. And there are four agenda items. The first item uh, on the agenda is for the project at 4605 North Hermitage, the Dr. Wallace C. Abbott House. Are there any members of the general public that would like to speak on this item? <clears throat> Seeing none, um, we'll move to the second item in the agenda, which is the project at 843 North Walcott in the East Village District. Are there any members of the general public wishing to speak on this item? Um, seeing none at this time. Um, the third item, uh, the third agenda item is for the project that's uh, 1057 to 59 North Walcott, also in the East Village District. Are there any members of the general public wishing to speak on this item? I see one. Um, Mr. Ward Miller. Yes. Hello, Commissioners um, of the Permit Review Committee. I'm Ward Miller, Executive Director of Preservation Chicago. Uh, we want to encourage uh, 
the uh, proposed uh, modifications to 1057 to 1059 North Wolcott in the East Village District. Uh, this is a, a former, it was built as a, as a tide house for the Peter Han Brewing Company. Uh, we find this to be an important building. Uh, it does have a, um, as we'd say, remodeled facade on the ground floor of the building. And we're hoping that this project will include a full restoration uh, of, of the exteriors of this building, um, which you know is, is a uh, designated Chicago landmark within the East Village District. And it also represents a group of tide houses um, uh, throughout the city that are designated. However, most of those are Schlitz tide houses. Um, and we want to encourage, uh, as we look to the future, more of these uh, tide houses that are really incredible, oftentimes incredible corner commercial buildings uh, be considered for designation. Uh, this was once of uh, an East Village uh, uh, community institution, if you will. It was the Happy Village uh, Lounge. Uh, we had a lot of uh, community meetings there um, in, in regards to the creation of the East Village District and a lot of community meetings there regarding other preservation uh, matters uh, in the community and even in the broader West Town community at uh, Happy Village. And so we're very pleased to see that this once very prominent um, institution uh, is, is going to remain and the building restored. And uh, we're very excited to see what the future holds um, as the building has been vacant for a number of years now. So thank you uh, for your consideration of the restoration of this uh, historic structure. Thanks so much, Mr. Miller. Um, and, and Chairman, uh, just to see one person on the phone, just a reminder, they can press star nine on their phone to raise their hand in Zoom, star nine. Okay. Does that do we know if that person wants to wants to speak or just reminding them now? Uh, just just a reminder. Okay, great. Um, moving to uh, I don't see any other uh, folks wanting to speak on this item. Um, the fourth item on the agenda is for the project at 1357 North Elston, the Morton Salt Warehouse Complex. Are there any members of the general public wishing to speak on this item? Um, and I'm seeing uh, one, um, Mr. Miller. Yes, hello again. Uh, for the record, Ward Miller, uh, Executive Director of Preservation Chicago. Uh, we wanna support the idea of uh, uh, this modification to the Morton Salt uh, Warehouse Complex at 1357 North Elston. Uh, this has been an amazing project, uh, as, as we all know, transformed um, uh, a former warehouse building uh, that needed quite a few repairs and modifications into an amazing complex known as the uh, Salt, the Salt Shed. Uh, this is really uh, an important revitalization of the north branch of the Chicago River, and uh, Preservation Chicago has been there during this whole process to uh, support and encourage uh, this kind of project uh, to proceed. So uh, we do want to encourage uh, uh, the approved interior and exterior rehabilitations of this incredible industrial complex, um, which is so uh, visible from the Kennedy Expressway and other points in Chicago. This is really a, mark, a, a remarkable um, vision and idea by this development team. And we'd like to see this uh, repeated elsewhere in the city looking to the future. So uh, kudos to everybody involved and Preservation Chicago fully supports um, this project. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mr. Miller. Um, and is there anyone else on this uh, agenda item that would like to speak uh, for the call in? Person uh, star nine, if you're interested in speaking on this item, uh, seeing none, um, I believe that uh, is all the members of the general public who have indicated they wish to speak on agenda items. And this concludes the public comment portion of the meeting. And we will go through now the agenda, which will begin with the uh, approval of the minutes from our previous meeting, which was a little bit back, uh, January 12th, uh, 2023. Um, and um, do we have a motion, um, commissioners, to approve the uh, the minutes? So moved. 
Commissioner Ponce uh, has made a motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second it, Commissioner Fair. Commissioner Fair has seconded, and we'll do the roll call. Um, Commissioner Rubin? <laughs> yes. All right. Commissioner Rubin's yes, I'm a yes. And the motion carries unanimously, and the minutes will be posted on the commission's website. Um, and we will now get into the projects. Um, first project on the agenda is 4605 North Hermitage um, in the 47th Ward, Alderman Martin, um, Dr. Wallace C. Abbott House. And we're talking about the proposed exterior re rehabilitation and restoration uh, of the original porch, replacement of non original windows, and modifications to a non historic rear addition. And hi, Emily. Um, you have the presentation, I hear. That's great. Thank you so much, Chairman. So this is a single family residence located on a large corner property at Wilson and Hermitage. Um, this is an individual designation. And so because of that, all elevations are considered to be significant features. Um, in 2012, the previous property owners renovated a non-historic rear addition and with the committee's approval, added an attached two guard garage. The current owners are now proposing to restore a number of the home's original features, which have been removed in the past, um, as well as to modify the 2012 rear addition to allow for a new entryway. So although originally constructed as a single family house, the property was also home to a funeral parlor and has had a number of modifications prior to the home's landmark designation. One of the altered features um, that was original is the main wraparound porch. While the porch's original footprint is still intact, the railings and balusters have been removed. The applicants provided historic photographs showing the original porch condition um, and is proposing to restore it based off of this. The existing porch columns will be replaced with new wood columns based on the historic design with new limestone piers at the foundation Railings will be reintroduced and scaled to meet code, and a new simplified vertical porch skirting is proposed. The porch roof is uh, proposed to remain. On the south facade of the porch, a new double door with an overhead transom is proposed to be replaced, uh, is proposed to replace the existing non-historic front door and side lights. Um, this is based off of historic configuration and design. Oh, this is, could you go to the next one? I'm so sorry. This one. <laughs> a new double door with an overhead transom is proposed to replace the existing non-historic front door and side lights. Um, this is based on historic configuration and design uh, shown in historic photographs. Okay, now can you go back? <laughs> Excellent. Um, on the west facade of the porch, the existing non-historic door and side light are proposed to be replaced with a new wood door and transom. Um, difficult to see in the uh, historic photo, but based off of the original design. One more. Thank you. A second floor. South facing window has been replaced in the past with a large double hung window. This window does not match any of the other window proportions on the building and based on historic photographs was likely put in following the removal of a decorative glass fixed window, which you can see in the middle picture. The applicants proposing to remove the non historic window and custom replicate a new wood window matching the original in design. Because all of these modifications are to non-historic alterations and the majority of the proposed work will restore missing elements based on photographic evidence, staff recommends approval as proposed. Okay, on the south elevation, the applicant is proposing to modify an existing breakfast nook by adding new glazing to the east elevation. Because of the minimal visibility from the street and that the new proposed windows are compatible in size and operation with others on the building, staff recommends that the proposed alteration will not have an adverse effect um, and window details should be submitted with the permit application. Okay, and then finally, um, as I had mentioned, um, a, a large addition was uh, put on in 2012 and the applicant is proposing to largely retain this addition. Um, with just one modification to the south facade, 
at the attachment point to the main house, which is um, squared in red there, a new entry is proposed with a raised porch approximately three feet in height. Because this addition is non-historic and the new entry will be compatible um, with the original, staff recommends approval as proposed. Um, I believe we have the architects here. Do you have any questions for them or uh, for me? Thanks so much, Emily. Um, do we have any questions for Emily? Commissioners, um, before hearing from the applicant, um, seeing none, um, I know the project architect is here, I guess. Uh, is it William Schultens? Yes. Hi. Hello, Commission. If you could just introduce yourself uh, and if you have any any uh, comments. Yeah, I'm William Schultens with Elements Architecture Group. I'm joined here by John Janik, the project architect. Um, yeah, Emily, you did a really, really wonderful job presenting what the owners of this house are looking to achieve. Um, I think just a couple things that I just wanted to say, it's been a joy to work on the house. Um, it's one of the more beautiful homes uh, tied to a really important person in Chicago, the Abbott family. And then um, we also have had the opportunity, really rare opportunity, we do quite a bit of historic restoration work. We don't have photos often, but on this particular project, we did have uh, two really, really important original condition photographs that we were able to use and uh, you know just go through with some detective-like work to see um, what are what were the original features of the home? So we feel like we've pretty accurately been able to determine that from the two photographs to restore the original wraparound porch that was remodeled. I like that phrase. Uh, back to its original condition, everywhere from the door columns, the rails, the limestone base, and then um, coming around to the windows up top. Again, we had some really, really good window photographs of the original that showed us Munton profiles, historic um, decorative windows that um, we're really happy to bring that back for this home, for the neighborhood to, to its original condition. Um, the addition that was described that was built in 2012 by Emily, we are, um, as you can see on the slide that was remaining on the screen here, um, we are just really looking to create a new entry for the family to come out of the kitchen down into the yard um, and do that in a way that's drawing inspiration from a lot of the original features of the house. Um, and do that, yeah, and do that in a way that's visually pleasing and respectful to the original home. So um, yeah, the design intent will be to match historic profiles everywhere that we can. Um, yeah, and I think that's about it I have to say. Great, thank you so much. Yeah, the, the documentation, the photo, the photography documentation with your model, super helpful, at least you know for me. Um, and uh, commissioners, any questions, comments? Commissioner Fair. Hey, yeah, just a couple of questions. And I think, you know, just in general, Sarn made me comment just to, you know, I think um, really thoughtful work through and through, um, you know, which is, uh, happy to happy to say that uh as opposed to maybe the the opposite but um two things i think in the the full packet that we received there's um a sunburst uh sculpture that's not original to the building and i think it was noted that it's a uh untextured surface that was behind that uh that piece so i was more so curious i i I think I'm on board with the note of you know that being restored, but was just curious what that surface actually is. And I'll, I've got a follow-up question, but I'll I'll pause on that. Yeah, that's a Jonathan. That's a really really astute detail. That's something that we looked at a, a lot as well. There is in the original proposal, we have a pretty good view. It's on page two of our original proposal, um, a west facade of the home and you can see through a tree without its leaves on it that it appears to be a plain facade with a decorative crown molding that goes under the eave and wraps around to just a low shed uh, roof feature. Our, our, um, that, that is a, our, our plan for that material is actually to do it out of either a, just a, a large painted wood panel um, or to 
provide a thin cementitious like stucco like panel to a to a backup board of uh, door rock or cement board or something like that but essentially just a smooth unornamented uh gable end that is that is what we can discern from that really good existing west photograph it appears just to be a simple a simple unornamented gable yeah, that that uh, makes sense. I would say, you know, maybe, you know, just giving some thought to you know, the original material palette. If you're, you know, keeping that the same, I think the, the painted wood might be, you know, definitely start that exploration. Um, so that, that's great to hear. And I think the photo that you pointed me to actually answered uh, my second question, which was just about the mutton detail. Um, and yeah, I see it in, in the historic photos. So kudos to you all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, yeah. Again, it was great to have that documentation. Uh, just, just back to the um, starburst, the sunburst pattern on that gable. Our intent, and you can see from the original photographs, the the unoriginal sunburst is appeared. It's it's a decorative, non-exterior wood-like piece. It, it's actually kind of falling off and behind. And what our hope would be would be just to restore what's behind that. Yeah, you, you can see there's a variety of them under the second floor window sills. There, there, there were some added there. I want to draw your attention to those. There's one that's below that sunburst. You can see between the, the head of those, those windows and the sunburst. That also is falling off. We're proposing removing that. And then um, that sunburst is starting to delaminate. So our goal would be, my, my presumption was, is that that is actually a, an applied wood painted piece that could be removed, keeping the substrate behind, um, you know, patching and painting that. So my goal would be to not have to introduce a new material and uh, just patch and paint that. However, it has been damaged perhaps with uh, just the application of that non-original ornament. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Great, um, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Rubin? My comment advances absolutely nothing, but while we're here, would you mind advancing to the picture of the family one more time, just so we can appreciate <laughs> this scholarship that the importance of this bicycle and apparently a garden rake <laughs> in, in this grouping of people. I enjoyed that too. <laughs> and there appears to be a woman wearing two foxes. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's not every day that um, that you end up hitting the uh, the photo documentation jackpot. Usually, for the express purposes of figuring out what a building looked like, but then you get the bonus of figuring yeah. out the values of the people who were living there, or at least being clued into some element of what things were important to them. And I just think this is tremendous. And um, you're very lucky to be entering into a, this project with this type of um, yeah. documentation to to yeah. guide you along the way. So I, I think it's tremendous. Totally agree with you, Adam. Uh, it's, it's a great roadmap to have. So it just eliminates a lot of the conjecture, which we sometimes need to do. But um, yeah, it's just really, really great to have them. Yeah, I enjoyed uh, the whole package. The documentation was very easy to follow. And Emily, your presentation was great, as always. Um, I'm curious. Uh, I read that there was a laboratory inside. Is that... <laughs> still there it's not unfortunately yeah we have not been able to see it um there, there's no there's no evidence of it still being in the house um okay. the home was actually converted into a funeral home in oh, yes. emily what was it the 80s or 90s and then repurchased by a homeowner and turned back into the uh into a single family but there's there was an extensive extensive renovation to the interior by the funeral home company. Um, I, I think a lot of those, that laboratory might have been removed at that point. So, but yeah, we, we have not been able to see it. That would be really cool if it was still there. Some of those old original <laughs> Abbott studies. Um, but no, we, we, it's not it's not evident in the interior at this moment. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, commissioners, if there's no other uh... Uh, questions or discussion, uh, I'd like to uh, request a motion uh, to adopt the staff recommendation. So moved. moved. Commissioner Ribbon. Commissioner Ribbon has moved. Um, do we have a second? 
Second, Commissioner Ponce. Commissioner Ponce has made a second and we'll do the roll call. Uh, Commissioner Fair? Yes. Great, and I am a yes. Um, and the motion carries unanimously. Um, really nice project. Thank you so much. Thank um, you guys. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um, and we're gonna move to item number two, uh, which is 843 North Walcott um, in the first ward, um, Alderman Espada, the East Village District. The proposed new construction of a three-story masonry multifamily residence with roof deck and uh, detached uh, rear garage. And uh, Joyce Ramos has a presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In December, 2022, a permit application was submitted for a new three-story, three-dwelling unit building. Historic preservation staff provided comments and have been working with the architect to refine the submission. Just as a background, the proposed demolition of the existing raised two-story workers' cottage that is currently on the lot, shown on the photo on the right, was reviewed and approved by the Commission on Chicago Landmarks and City Council. Um, the demo permit application was approved by Historic Preservation Division staff in July of 2022. The permit has not been issued by the Department of Buildings and the building still exists on the property today. The owner is waiting to obtain the permit when they are ready to demolish and excavate for the new building, which would occur at the same time. For context, the montage on the left shows the 800 block of North Walcott. It consists of cottages, flats, and corner apartments interspersed with new construction. The subject property is outlined here in red. Uh, the buildings range in heights from two-story to three-story structures with most buildings sitting on a partially raised basement. The new building at 843 North Walcott, um, shown here in yellow, um, is located mid-block between a raised three flat um, to the north, uh, which measures 36 foot seven inches uh, to the predominant roof line, and then 43 foot five inches to the highest point of the stuck parapet. Um, and then on the other side is a raised two-story multifamily residence uh, here to the south that measures 34 foot six inches to the top of that ridge. The new building is proposed to be 41 feet, 10 inches to the top of the parapet. Um, in order to be more compatible with similar building types on the block, staff recommends that the overall building height shall be no taller than 39 feet. Please note that the height of the previously approved new construction project located at 855 uh, North Walcott was limited to 39 feet by the Permit Review Committee in 2017. Um, additionally, the new construction project located at 851 uh, North Walcott, which is a non-contributing building, um, which was constructed prior to the district's designation and therefore is not a precedence for what could be compatible in the district and is not considered when evaluating new construction projects. The floor to ceiling heights of the proposed new building are nine foot seven inches uh, for the basement and nine foot four inches for the first, second and third floors. The proposed stoop height is five foot six inches. The proportions of the floor height, stoop height and overall building are taller than the historic buildings on the block and are not compatible. In order to be more compatible, staff recommends to reduce the floor heights and the stoop heights in order, uh, so the, in order for the overall building height um, to be no higher than 39 feet. Uh, and this would make the proportions of the building compatible with the rest of the historic buildings on the block. The parapet extends three feet above the roof. A rooftop stair enclosure provides access to a rooftop deck and is set back 31 foot six inches from the front facade. The stair enclosure extends five feet above the parapet walls for a total height of 46 foot 10 inches. The roof slopes up from the west um, to the east of the enclosure matching the slope of the stair and is proposed to be clad with dark shingles which will further, further minimize its visibility. The commission typically has approved rooftop penthouses on new construction uh, that are no larger than required to provide rooftop access. The proposed front yard setback is nine feet, nine inches. The proposed side yard setback on the north elevation is two feet, which would create a total width of four feet, 10 inches between the subject building and the adjacent building to the north. And the proposed side yard setback on the south is three feet, which would create a total width of six foot, two inches uh, between the subject building and the adjacent building to the south. Staff recommends approval as these dimensions match the predominant setback patterns of the buildings contributing to the district's characters. 
Uh, a new five foot high wrought iron ornamental fence will be installed at the front of the property along the sidewalk and a one story flat roof masonry three car garage is proposed at the rear of the lot with alley access and a roof deck. The building is proposed to be constructed out of modular size brick in a red brown color um, trimmed with smooth stone bands. Images of the materials are shown here on the bottom left. Uh, this brick will be used on all elevations of the building. And staff recommends that the brick selection shall be modified to include a greater variation in texture and of reds and browns in the color palette. Uh, the mortar shall match the masonry color and the final masonry and mortar sample shall be submitted with a permit application. Um, please note that this staff recommendation was added um, to the conditions of approval after the final uh, agenda was posted. Staff felt that um, this was important to include uh, to improve the overall appearance of the building. The porch and the stairs are proposed to be constructed out of concrete with a simply detailed ornamental railing. And the front facade is topped with a flat roof line with stone coping, which is common uh, for brick two and three flats in the district. The proposed window configuration on the front facade is a fixed picture window flanked with double hung windows and a transom above. The window configuration can be found in other historic buildings within the district and staff recommends approval. The proposed front door is a paneled wood door and staff recommends that details for the proposed windows and front door shall be submitted with a permit application for review. In conclusion, staff recommends approval of the project with the recommendations mentioned during the presentation and also listed here on the slide. The alderman is aware of the project. Um, the community group reviewed the proposal and provided comments. Please let me know if you have any questions about this presentation. The architect and the owner are also here if you have any questions for them. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Joyce. Um, any questions for Joyce uh, for one of the architects? I see Commissioner Fair. Yeah, th thanks, Joyce. I had just one quick question. I noticed um, a slight discrepancy between the uh, transom for the windows uh, at the main facade uh, on the drawings versus the rendering. Uh, I think the drawings show kind of more of the Chicago mm -hmm. style and the rendering is just split for two. So I, uh, I I like the kind of more traditional Chicago style, but just wanted to know which uh, uh, of the two is uh, has been approved or uh, the recommendation was behind. I, I, I agree with you. I, I, I like this um, this composition better. Um, I know John Hanna, the architect, is also here. Um, if you'd like to say anything about that configuration. Uh, so, yeah, John Hanna here. Uh, yeah, so uh, the front elevation is correct, divided into three transoms. Uh, that is correct. Yeah, excellent. Great point. Great question. Um, well, Mr. Hanna, would you like to say anything uh, about the project? Any statements? Um, no, uh, it was fun working with Jace, Joyce and uh, uh, everything Everything worked out good. We're very happy with how this turned out. Thank you. Commissioners, any, any questions um, for the architect? Um, okay, seeing none. Um, I guess let's uh, like to request a motion if there's no no questions. Um, yes, yeah, so, so moved. I think um, you know just with the you know, maybe note uh, about just seeking the clarity and, and maybe reflecting it, um, you know, in the documents moving forward of the transom in the front elevation being the correct one, but, but otherwise some. Thank you for that Thank you. Um, so Commissioner Fair has made a, a modified motion um, um, that that the project uh, reflect um, the, the elevation as drawn, not as rendered. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second it. Commissioner Rubin has made a second. Um, and we'll do the roll call. Uh, Commissioner Ponce. Yes. Commissioner Ponce is a yes, um, and I'm a yes as well. Um, and uh, the motion carries unanimously. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, all right, moving on to item number three, um, 1057 to 59 North Walcott, the second ward, Alderman Hopkins, East Village District. It's the proposed rehabilitation of an existing corner building 
removal of non-historic one-story addition and replacement with a uh, new three-story uh, structure. Um, and Emily Barton has the presentation. Thank you. Um, okay, so the subject property is also in the East Village District, but I did want to draw your attention that um, whereas the previous project was on Wolcott in that lower section, this is now um, a couple of blocks up. Uh, so, but it is on the corner of Wolcott and Thomas, featuring a contributing two-story masonry building and a with a one-story non-contributing side addition to the south. And the applicant's proposing to replace this one-story addition with a new three-story mixed-use structure attached to the historic building at the ground floor. Uh, so the current proposal is for a new structure that while attached at the ground floor, does architecturally read as a separate building. The new structure is proposed to be approximately 40 feet tall with a decorative parapet that reaches 45 feet, seven inches at its tallest point. Um, so again, within the East Village District, the applicant has provided context showing that this proposed height is within the range of historic building heights, um, including these at uh, you know, 1823 West Thomas and 1138 North Wolcott. The new structure is proposed to have no front setback matching the adjacent historic building's conditions. No side yard is proposed on the north elevation as this will be where the two buildings connect. The applicant has provided examples throughout the district of historic properties that lie directly on the lot line, um, such as those in the examples on the slide. Uh, the south side yard setback is proposed to be five feet, also within the range of, of compatible setbacks in the district. Um, and a masonry gateway pass-through is proposed in the south side yard to serve as the main entrance to the residential units that are above. Um, at the rear of the historic building, the new construction is proposed to overlap the historic, the existing building in the southeast corner, approximately eight feet deep by eight feet wide. Um, because this is a corner lot, this will be visible from the public rights of way, and so we asked for visibility renderings showing the visual impact. Um, and because this overlap will not obscure or destroy any decorative features and is not noticeably perceptible from the street, staff recommends approval as proposed. Okay, the new structure is designed to seamlessly fit within the existing neighborhood context and features compatible window sizes with one over one aluminum clad uh, wood double hung windows and a compatible storefront at the ground floor. Arched brick headers and a corbelled arched parapet are simplified versions of the common decorative features that are found throughout the district. Um, the building will be clad in a reddish orange face brick. You can see there it's the Morin Colony red water struck brick um, uh, with a finished return approximately 25 feet along the south as is shown in this rendering um, and approximately 50 feet on the north side elevation where it will be more visible. The remainder of the building is proposed to be clad in a Chicago common brick. These are very common throughout the district. Staff recommends approval as proposed. Um, because the new structure will be connecting to the historic building at the common brick side elevation, you know, the historic building doesn't have a masonry wrap. There's, there's really nothing that's going to be covered up. Um, and so staff recommends the attachment will not adversely affect any significant features. So the applicant also plans to rehab the historic building at 1059 Wolcott and remove the non-historic first floor cladding and skirted lean-to roof. Um, a new compatible aluminum storefront is proposed along Wolcott. Uh, according to Sandboard Maps, this building originally served as a Tide House saloon, um, and this was common for corner properties in this district. The applicant has designed the new storefront to be compatible with other historic corner storefronts in the district and the surrounding area. Two roof decks are proposed to be added to the historic building. The railings will be set back approximately five feet, two inches from the front parapet and six feet, two inches from the north side parapet. The railings will extend approximately two feet above the existing parapet and the railings will be open metal and no taller than required by code. 
the applicants provided some diagrams showing the potential visibility as well as studies showing the decks from a number of locations to the north and the west. And based on these visibility studies, staff recommends the proposed decks will only be minimally visible and shall be approved as proposed. At the rear of the building on the second floor, the rear masonry wall has been replaced with a frame wall. Um, a masonry opening along Thomas has also been infilled with frame construction and vinyl windows, as you can see in that middle photograph. Um, the applicant is proposing to remove all of the frame construction and open the room as an open air balcony. Um, historic photos of this area have not ever been located, but based on the simplified sill and lack of ornamentation um, around the masonry opening along Thomas, it, appe it appears that um, this insertion was not original to the building. The first floor of this volume is constructed out of masonry, um, but the second floor rear wall is frame, which also indicates it was not original. Um, you know, furthermore, as you can see in that uh, third photo, the western wall of the space is solid masonry and appears to be the original rear elevation. Staff recommends that removing the frame infill and keeping the opening will not be an adverse effect to the building. Railings will be required for code and staff recommends they be no higher than necessary. Um, so I did want to draw your attention. We did make a change to one of the recommendations that was included in your packet regarding this back wall. Um, so the existing historic building is only 58 feet in length along Thomas and currently features a rear patio uh, space, which is enclosed with a solid masonry fence, approximately six feet tall. You can see in that lower photo. This is proposed to be replaced with a new open metal fence with masonry curb along Thomas. This fence is proposed to be approximately five feet in height with a solid masonry wall along the alley. Staff recommends approval of the rear fence as proposed. Alternatively, as was brought up at the community meeting, because of noise concerns, the existing solid masonry wall may be maintained as it is or reconstructed to be no taller than five feet. Um, if you have any questions about that or any of the other conditions, let me know. Otherwise, I believe we have representatives from the architecture firm uh, for this, as well as ownership. All right. Thanks so much, Emily. Um, commissioners, any questions for Emily before hearing from the architect? Um, seeing none. Um, let's hear from the architect. Uh, is it uh, Martin Snow? Ah, yes. Does everyone hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Um, I'm Martin Snow, like you said, from SUW Architecture and Design. Uh, we were really excited when our client brought us this project. Um, we have a great appreciation for the historic architecture around Chicago, and in particular, these tight houses. It's really fun to dig into and research. So we're excited to, you know, bring this one back a little bit closer to the to its original condition than it is um, currently. It was great working with Emily. She was very helpful throughout the whole process. I'm happy to answer any questions the commission might have. Great, thank you. Commissioners, any questions for the project architect? Um, seeing none, um, any any points of discussion on this project? Um, Commissioner Fair. I guess that's something to say. I, I think, uh, you know, the call to make the move back to a uh, masonry fence there uh, was was likely the right call uh, as someone who's been, uh, you know, at, at the establishment before it closed. Uh, I think that that definitely makes sense, and uh, also is just mindful of you know the potential future use uh, that's there. Um, I think the only other thing, and I I you know don't know if it's quite yet a question because I don't have an answer for it. Is you know my reaction to. Um, what is the, I didn't lose my directions here, but the Walcott facade essentially and the, the storefront, um, you know, very, very common, something that you see typical for a lot of storefronts that, that they're doing. But I think, you know, in particular, what stood out to me, I don't know if we can jump to kind of the rendering along uh, Walcott, um, but there's a few points where that you know facade meets kind of some of the stone, and you you've got that 
kind of interesting clash point um, of, you know, this kind of painted black aluminum and then, you know, that, that, that finished stone. I, I don't know what the answer for that is. Uh, I think it's something that we see a lot uh, now, but it's, um, you know, one thing that I just might offer just for reflection is, uh, is there another way to kind of wed those two together? Um, you know, I think what I've seen, especially as we've seen a lot of these tied houses that are, you know, getting additional attention is that that, uh, the ornamentation and the detail was kind of paramount to that. Um, so something in the spirit of that, I think, is just what jumped out to me. I, I don't have the answer, like I said. Though, so. Yeah, and, and Jonathan, that's a good point. That's something we hope to bring more detail to as this develops. Um, we selectively cut some holes in that existing lean-to roof, as Emily called it, to try and see what's there, and there's really not much left. It looks like a simple steel header beam that runs across that opening. And we actually found examples of historic tied houses that had a similar, similarly simple um, steel header with just some uh, steel posts or iron posts and columns. Um, so that's, and, and we did, you know, the corner column is still there um, yeah. hidden within the enclosure. So that's what we're pulling our detailing from for now. But as that, um, that real demo occurs and we can get a closer look at everything that's there, we're hoping to pull out all the detail we can from the existing. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Fair. Um, um, Commissioner Rubin. Yeah, um, I think this project is really wonderful. Um, I did have a question about um, some of the existing conditions. Um, I noticed the, the detailing around on, on the Tide House. Um, I mean, I've but it's either stone or it's or some element of or ter terracotta or a little bit of both. Since since um, Preservation Chicago yesterday did a presentation at. Um, at the architecture center about uh terracotta around chicago i was just curious about the existing conditions for um the uh some of the detailing on the tight house and then also i was curious about that um ground floor um window the one that has kind of like the the um the divided uh panels on it if that was something that was infill from some point um in the mid 20th century and if that was going to be just a little, can you tell me a little bit more about that window and about some of the detailing around the windows and the medallion on the parapet? Yeah, so the parapet medallion, we'll start there, is limestone and it's carved and, and it's actually in very good condition. You can still see okay. the detail of the, the P in the hand for the Peter Hand Brewery. Um, the window surrounds are uh, actually just a lighter colored brick with little stone accents for the okay. keystones and the voussoirs. Um, same for the big arch window, which we do think was original. That's been painted over several times since even some of the glass looks like it just got painted over. So our client intends to restore that back um, to original as much as we can by stripping off some of that paint and getting it back to the original wood and glass. Um, yeah, so I, I would, you know, generally the exterior of this building is in quite good shape. It's good news. Yeah, I, I, th I think the medallion is kind of a cool one because as um, Mr. Miller mentioned uh, a little bit ago, like it, we we have a a good precedent for being able to identify these Schlitz tied houses. Some of the other brands are are a little bit more um, less familiar in their storytelling, but being able to retain those level of details that that identify these um, as tied houses with a particular story to tell. I'm I'm glad that you're able to um, to keep that in the uh, in the design, so this is identifiably that building type. So um, I think I think this is a really interesting project. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Rubin. Um, any other uh, questions, uh, commissioners? Um, points of discussion? Um, yeah, I, I just, it does appear that the building's in, in really, what you can see is in really great shape. I think Commissioner Fair, it would be really interesting to see what's under that roof. And that's a very good point. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, with that, I, I don't have any more comments. Um, commissioners, uh, I'd like to request a motion to recommendations. We have a motion. So moved. Commissioner Fair has made a motion. Do we have a second? Second, Commissioner Ponce. Thank you, Commissioner Ponce. It's made a second. Um, and uh, the roll call with Commissioner Rubin. Yes. The yes. I'm a yes. And um, yes, congratulations. So I think this is a really exciting project. It's going to be 
Uh, can't wait to see it, it uh, completed. Um, great work. Uh, moving on to um, the final agenda item for us today, um, 1357 North Elston, the 27th Ward, Alderman Burnett, uh, the Morton Salt Warehouse Complex, uh, proposed modifications to previously approved interior and exterior rehabilitation of the existing industrial complex, including new roof decks and signage. Um, Emily Barton has a presentation. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, so as you may remember, uh, PRC reviewed this rehab project um, at the October 2020 meeting, as well as last summer at the July 2022 meeting. Um, this is some additional design modifications, as well as a new main sign proposal, um, which requires review. Okay. So the applicant's proposing several changes that will only be visible from within the complex and not visible from either Elston or Blackhawk, which are the two public right of ways around this, around this complex. Um, two new roof decks are proposed on the packaging building. One is located on the second floor on the eastern half of the roof. You can see it highlighted in yellow in that key render. Um, this deck is approximately 64 feet by 73 feet. Open metal railings will be set back approximately one foot from the parapet um, surrounding the open sides of the deck and will only extend approximately one foot above the parapet um, due to existing conditions. A new stair is proposed to the south of the deck. I boxed it out in red, you can see, um, to access this deck from the ground and it will be designed to match the railings and stairs found elsewhere throughout the complex. The other deck proposed serves as a terrace accessed from the third floor space of the packaging building. Um, this one is highlighted in red. Uh, this deck is approximately 48 by 65 feet. Similar to the second floor deck, it also will feature open metal railings. These will extend approximately two foot nine inches above the parapet. Um, and because of that, the railings are set back approximately four and a half feet from the eastern parapet and one foot from the south. Um, at the third floor terrace, a new curtain wall system is introduced on the east elevation, which allows visibility of the trusses and internal roof structure inside to the outside. The applicant provided several visibility studies showing the impact of these two decks and new curtain wall on the complex as a whole. Because of the siting of these modifications, um, most of these view locations are from within the complex rather than the public right of way as we usually do, um, you know, visible studies. Um, and these show that while it will definitely be visible from various locations within the complex, um, none of these changes will be visible from Elston or Blackhawk. And although never original to the building, the proposed modifications are contextually appropriate to the industrial nature of the complex and staff recommends approval as proposed. Okay, to advertise the new venue, the applicant is looking to add a new illuminated static sign to the Elston elevation of the packaging building. Um, the sign is proposed to be approximately 41 feet above grade and is, has been designed so that it spans those four existing steel wide flanges um, on the facade. Uh, the sign will read salt shed and has been designed so as to not obscure the very minimal masonry detailing on this facade. Uh, the powder coated steel letters, individual letters will be attached at the top and bottom to a steel frame in a chevron shape. Um, they'll be illuminated with LED linear strip lighting on the backside that will primarily reflect on the masonry, um, giving a halo lit appearance, as you can see in that nighttime render. Uh, the sign will be primarily attached to the facade at those steel channels to avoid additional masonry penetrations um, and will be held off approximately eight, eight to 12 inches. A smaller sign reading wind trust is proposed to be located directly underneath the larger sign centered on the middle. The sign's approximately 30 inches tall by 13 and a half feet wide and is proposed to be cut out letters backlit with LED lighting reflecting off of the back panel. 
Um, these signs will not damage or obscure any decorative features and have a clean utilitarian design. Staff recommends approval as proposed with the condition that any attachments um, be made in, within mortar joints uh, and all conduit be concealed. Um, you know, we would just wanna see these attachment details and conduit locations with the permit application. Um, if you have any questions for me, I'm here. Otherwise, um, we have representatives from ownership here as well. Thank you, Emily. Um, Commissioners, any questions for Emily before hearing from uh, the applicant, the ownership? Um, seeing none. Um, let's hear from the project developer. Is it uh, Dave Duder? Yes, Dave Dave Deuter. Um, once again, Emily, thank you very much for your support uh, committee as well. I know we've been in front of you a, a couple of times on this project. Um, it's not for a lack of uh, trying to get everything right the first time, but it just seems like there's continued evolution on this project and uh but i think we're heading in a in a fabulous direction so um i think emily has uh has teed it up very well like she's done the other projects as well and i'm here for questions as needed thanks so much um commissioners any questions um commissioner rubin commissioner rubin uh Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, can I say I actually really, um, really enjoy the the Chevron uh, salt shed sign. I think it's really interesting. It's it's, it's uh, I feel like it's rare to see new signage that takes on any particular character um, on historic or contemporary buildings these days. So it's it's nice to see a design that I think is really interesting. Um, and I like the backlighting. It really emphasizes the materials behind it rather than the sign itself. But it's an interesting contrast to um, Wintrust below it, which is um, illuminated a little bit differently. Um, this is probably fairly obvious, but the, the um, brightness of the wind trust um, piece of the sign, I imagine, is uh, adjustable, so it can be in balance with a much more passive lighting scheme above it. Absolutely. Um, OK. I, well said. Yeah, it was a weirdly phrased question. I guess I just considering that they they both light very differently and kind of focus your eye in different ways. Just it's it's an important balance to there, and and obviously, like you know, the emphasis here is on is on the larger letters on the salt shed. So just just making sure that it, it's adjustable. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Excellent uh, question, um, Commissioner Fair. Yeah, just just uh, a comment. Um, yeah, just think really nice job. I was particularly happy to see the uh, you know wide flanges used uh, to uh, kind of effectively do a unique sign here. Uh, I also agree. I think the chevron shape is is a good choice. I think it to some degree also echoes back to some of the forms of the uh, you know the uh, venue's roof itself. Um, so yeah, just uh, I think really excellent job, and you know keeping that little wind trust sign to the mortar joints, uh, you know, is is a is the move in the right direction as well. Thank you, Commissioner Fair. Um, any other questions, comments, commissioners? Um, seeing none. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I thought the I thought the sign was a, a fun fun way to do it. And even though it's a historic structure, it, it feels like it, it was the right move to give some personality to it. So I, I I like that also, and I I think that the the glazing uh, at the at the structure uh, at the roof terrace is is a is a welcome addition um, to the building, um, and I'm really looking forward to to visiting this building. I've I can only see, seen it from the highway, but I've heard really good things of you know folks that have gone to concerts already. So it's really it's really an exciting project uh, for the city. Um, with that, um, any other questions, comments, commissioners? Uh, seeing none, um, like to request a motion to adopt the staff recommendations uh, for uh, as proposed with, you know, the uh, I guess noting the dimmability of the signage. So moved, Commissioner Rubin. Uh, Commissioner Rubin has, has moved. We have a second. Seconded, Commissioner Fair. Commissioner Fair has seconded. Um, and the roll call, uh, Commissioner Ponce. Yes, absolutely. Paul says a yes, I'm a yes, and the motion carries unanimously. Um, congratulations. 
Thank, thank you very much. I, again, greatly appreciate uh, everybody's help and uh, Emily, special nod to you again. Um, hopefully, hopefully it's, one, it's one of the last times we'll be dealing with this one. Thank you. All good improvements. Thank you. Um, with that, um, we are uh, no more items on the agenda and there's no further business for us uh, today. So I'd like to request a motion to adjourn. We have a motion. So so moved. Moved. Uh -oh, it's a tie. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. <laughs> Commissioner Ponce doubled the, broke the tie. Uh, Commissioner Ponce's motion. Do we have a second? A uh, second. Second by Commissioner Fair uh, and um, uh, Commissioner Rubin. Let's do it. Yes. All right. Um, <laughs> yes, as well, the motion carries um, unanimously, and we are adjourned. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, uh, for your time. Thank you, staff, for the great presentations. Thank you for all the projects. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye.